Today I'll be talking about VAuth, a system that we designed to provide continuous authentication for voice assistants and voice-enabled devices so that they hopefully only answer to you and not to someone else or something else. I've done this work while at Michigan, while collaborating with Huang Feng, who has since then joined Facebook and under the supervision, supervision of Professor Kang Shin. So voice is an, interactive, is an attractive and interactive interaction surface because it allows us to interact with our devices from a distance. So we don't have to be actually in front of our devices, touching them or using a keyboard or such things. And this is very desirable in many scenarios, like when we're driving, when we're cooking, or when we're exercising. It's not feasible to use a regular touch interface and sometimes not even safe to do so. And we've seen that these voice assistants have been embedded in many devices, like your smartphones, your home assistants, vacuum cleaners, alarm clocks, TVs. All of these are becoming voice enabled. Now this very feature that makes voice interfaces very desirable sometimes can come up with some undesirable effects because these voice enabled devices listen to everyone and sometimes to everything. And we've seen these things in the news and all over the time like TV shows and TV anchors having fun with our Amazon Alexa devices and Google Home devices and issuing commands and trying to control them from a distance. And all of this comes from very basic feature. Voice is an open medium. And, it has, and these voice assistants have been designed to favor usability, meaning that they have been designed to accept commands, right? And this very open channel feature of voice has some repercussions. A few years ago, AVG researchers demonstrated an app that can issue voice commands to do privilege escalation, so that it can issue voice command to the smart assistant on the same smart device so that it can perform functionality it doesn't have permissions to do. We've also seen last year in Usenix security conference a mangled voice attack by which researchers have designed a specific voice that as humans we can't really interpret, but your voice assistant will interpret as a valid voice command. Researchers this year have gone one step further by designing inaudible voices, which are on the ultrasound range, that exploit some of the non-linearities non at the microphone circuits to be able to inject voice commands into your voice assistants. Now, the traditional solution to address these voice authentication problems has been through voice biometrics, which is very similar to facial recognition or to fingerprints, is extracting a unique signature from your voice. And the premise is that your voice is not gonna be changing over time. We can get the signature and then we can use it to authenticate you without further, um, without further usability problems. And interestingly enough, some banks have been using this technology to authenticate their callers. So now if I have to make a phone call to my bank, they have to ask some information to authenticate me, right? Like phone number, SSN and stuff like that. Now they are relying on this voice authentication technology to be able to authenticate their users right away. But as you already know, these have big problems because we have seen a big rise in voice synthesis or speech synthesis technology. And there have been startups where you can get a one minute speech segment of some user or some individual, and then they can be able to fabricate voices and fabricate segments or speech signals that sound just like them. Actually, a couple of years ago in an Esquerix conference, researchers have been able to break the speech speaker Speer speaker verification system by designing such signals. So in the rest of this talk, I'm gonna be talking about how can we address or solve this problem without relying on biometrics or these signatures. And our solution is through a device that we designed and which we call VAuth, and it provides continuous voice authentication. And the continuous part has been highlighted earlier today as being very important. But I just want to highlight a small caveat here. It's not enough that we authenticate the user who is directly in front of the device, because as we saw in previous attacks, that even an attack can come over the ultrasound range. So the attacker doesn't have to be in front of the device. It could be using an ultrasonic, for example, uh, speaker or something like that. And this is a flow diagram of, our, of how our V author or how our scheme actually works. So the user has to, spare, has to wear a specific device that in our case contains a high bandwidth accelerometer, which can be bought off the shelf for $40. Mm -hmm. 
and it leverages a very basic feature of human, how humans generate forces. So now I'm as, as I'm speaking, my throat is vibrating and I'm generating a shock wave or a pressure wave, which is essentially the speech signal, right? This speech signal is traveling over the air and traveling through my body. And as, a, as an effect of that, my upper body, at least my upper body is vibrating. And we leverage these vibrations which have some correspondence to the speech signal as some sort of a physical assurance channel. So we have this dedicated device that's measuring the vibrations of your body as you're speaking. And then via Bluetooth, we're using Bluetooth as a secure wireless transmission mechanism or out of band channel to transmit these vibration signals to your voice assistant. And then we have a real time matching engine that gets this accelerometer signal, matches it with the speech signal, Obviously, if they match, the voice command passes to the voice assistant where it's executed, otherwise it's blocked. Now, this requires that you have to wear an additional device, which could be a limitation of these mechanisms. So that's something we're already aware of. But we, we think that this technology can be embedded in existing wearable products that users already wear. For example, it could be part of an earbud in which the accelerometer is placed next to your ear or it could be an eyeglasses in which the accelerometer is placed on your nose and it's part of the nose pad. Or it could be a necklace in which the accelerometer is, pl is placed on the back of your neck, for example. And this is a picture of our prototype. So this is the high bandwidth accelerometer I told you about earlier. So it's a smaller than a coin, costs $40. It has a bandwidth of 11 kilohertz and it's attached to an off-the-shelf Bluetooth transmitter. And this is the battery of the Bluetooth transmitter. So the hardware design is not very elaborate. We just use off-the-shelf components to provide an off, uh, a proof of concept, but we believe with proper hardware design, the prototype can be more concise and smaller. And this is the same prototype mounted, of the, mounted on the eyeglasses of Juan, my collaborator. So is that, here you can see the accelerometer mounted on the nose pad of the eyeglasses. And this, uh, hard, and this wireless prototype is fully compatible with Android Google now. Because you have, so you have to really change the voice assistant, so we hacked Andrew to make that happen. The cornerstone of VAuth is the matching algorithm, which answers a basic question. Do the accelerometer signal collected off your body match the microphone that has been transmitted, that has been collected from the microphone of the voice assistant? And this matching happens in three stages. We have the segment identification stage, the first segment analysis stage and the matching decision stage. I'm gonna go over each one in a little bit of detail. And I'm gonna use that through an example of a human, of a male speaker, me in this case, saying two words in front of a microphone and with an accelerometer mounted on the chest. And I'm saying the words cup, lock, which corresponds to these high energy uh, segments over here in the voice, seg on the voice signals. So VAuth will get two signals, right? There's the raw signal from the accelerometer and the raw signal from the microphone. The very first step we do, we do some high pass filtering to remove the artifacts of human motion. Then we remove these high energy spikes which could, resu which could result from the accelerometer rubbing against your skin. Then we align the signals using the time shift that maximizes correlation. And then we do the very first real step, which is identifying the segments. And these segments are energy bumps in the, accelerations in the accelerometer signal because voice is an artifact of the vibrations that's happening on our body. So if there's vibration, there should be voice. If there's, if there's voice and no vibration, the sound didn't come from me, or it didn't come from the bearer of the device, because that's another issue that I'm gonna be talking about. So we do a running average just to, to get the energy bounce when it's above the background noise level. We do a threshold, then we get the energy envelope, which is basically a sequence of ones and zeros. No energy, energy, no energy, energy, and so forth. Now the very first security feature that we're providing is that you're overlaying this energy envelope of the accelerometer signal on top of that of the voice signal. So that we're nullifying all the parts of the voice signal that do not correspond to human vibration. Meaning that the bearer of the device was not, was not his body or her body was not vibrating at the time this voice was collected by the microphone. Then we do a paired segment comparison. So we take every segment from the accelerometer signal and we compare it with its counterpart from the voice signal. We do that first by identifying the glottal cycles of both signals. 
So a feature of the voice signal, because of how the voice is generated from the glottal vibrations, that they have period periodic patterns. And these are referred to as the glottal cycles. So basically, we compare the glottal cycles from the accelerometer segment to its voice counterpart. The very first step, just to do a sanity check by checking the fundamental frequency, which is the inverse of the, of the instantaneous glottal period, to see if it within, falls within the human speech range. We do a distance, very distance comparison, and then we also, check, we also check the maximum correlation between the raw segment values. And this is the same example on segment S3 from the previous ones that I showed you. So S3 doesn't actually match between the microphone and the accelerometer signal. While S4, for example, which matches the word lock, so it's cup, lock, this is, these are actually matching. So you can see that the glottal cycle, for example, this case aligned nicely, and the maximum cross-correlation is high enough. The last step of our analysis is, to is actually to make a decision. Do these things, do, do these two signals match or not? So the inputs are the surviving seg segments from both signals, from the accelerometer and the microphone signals. Because if two, segment, if two segments do not match, we just, we just remove them. And then we, then we extract a feature vector from the cross-correlation vector of both signals, and we pass it through an SVM. We just chose SVM um, as a proof of concept. And this has been trained only once on a speaker who, was saying for, who, mentioned 40, who spoke 44 phone English phonemes using the microphone accelerometer. In this case, it's me again. So it has been trained once. So there's no per-user training, OK? Um, so this feature vector goes to the SVM, which generates a value 0 or 1, matching the thing the command executes. If it does not match, then the command is blocked. Before getting to the evaluation, so there's something I have to actually elaborate. So the main advantage here against biometrics that this thing is more resilient. Biometrics are not resilient, because if your biometric gets leaked or compromised, basically you lost the thing. Think about your fingerprints, right? If somebody gets a picture of your fingerprint, then they can use it to more or less access some systems. In this case, if this hardware token, like the VAuth, the wearable component they're proposing, gets lost, then you can just impair it via Bluetooth. But till you discover that, there's an attack window, which opens an interesting research question which have people have looked into before. How to authenticate wearables to humans? And we, we're not targeting this problem here, but that's something I just wanted to highlight. So to evaluate VAuth, we recruited 18, 18 users from in Michigan, and we asked them to issue 30 commands under six scenarios. Three positions, which I referred to earlier. The eyeglass scenario, which is on the nose, on the back, on the back of the neck, and the necklace, and the earbuds. And we asked them to perform the same experiment while sitting on a table, while sitting in a chair, and while jogging around in a room, just to see if the movements have some effect on the accuracy or not. We tested the 30 commands were in English, and we leveraged the multilingual diversity of our lab and asked one user to try the system with Arabic commands, Korean, Persian, and Chinese commands. And these are the basic results that we have. I'm presenting the 10th percentile of the true positive, meaning that 90% of the results were higher than these numbers, and 90% of the results were lower than these false positive rates. So to make a long story short, um, so the true positive rate was higher than, was, was high, except for this value over here, which corresponds to two cases of users not having high energy in their accelerometer signal, which is basically the accelerometer was not in full body content, contact all the time, which is, again, I have to admit, is a limitation of our system. So the accelerometer has to be in constant body contact. But, but if it's not in contact, then the true positive rate is gonna go lower but the false positive rate is not gonna go high, right? So it's a usability issue, but not, it's not a security issue. And the second thing, we still have a false positive rate. But again, remember, we're nullifying the segments that do not match. So the resulting signal that's resulting in a false positive cannot be really interpreted by a voice assistant. And we tried all of those that really resulted in false positive instances. And we found the results to be consistent across the other four languages. Second, we tried an acoustic injection attack. And this has been proposed in Euro SMP last year. So the idea is, it's an accelerometer, right? So it measures vibration. Vibrations can come over the body, and they can come over the air. So we got the accelerometer, and we placed a high magnitude or high 
uh, high energy speaker next to it, and then evaluated the distance beyond which the accelerometer will not be able to capture any signal over the air. We tried two scenarios. The first one, the accelerometer was exposed. The second one, the accelerometer was covered. And then we changed the distance across those with different magnitude level and evaluated when the accelerometer, the instances at which the accel distances at which the accelerometer is capturing energy above the noise level. Because if it's not above the noise level, V out is not gonna capture it anyways. So it's beyond 30 centimeters. So we found that at a cutoff of 30 centimeters, the accelerometer in our scenarios does not capture any signal over the air. So the attacker has to be closer than 30 centimeters. And the final piece of evaluation that I wanted to show you today is about the delay and energy. And this, these have also been tested on our real wireless prototype. So we tried the delay when the commands match, when the commands do not match, and when we had a very long command, more than 30 words. So on average, the delay for matching was 364 milliseconds, a little bit less for mismatching, and for a very long command, still took less than one second. And that matching was implemented in a MATLAB server, so it has, to, and this actually includes going to the server, getting the result, and coming back. So in a, real pro, in a real product, it should be even lower than that. We also evaluated the energy consumption of our Bluetooth, basically of our Bluetooth transmitter. So in the idle case was six milliamperes, and the active case was 31 milliamperes. The active case meaning when the actual, the user is actually emit, issuing a command. So we did the rough computation. So if for 10 commands per day, for a 500 milliamps hour battery, this prototype should last for one week. So in conclusion, voice is an open channel, which provides unauthorized access to your voice activated devices and assistants. And the challenge is to provide continuous voice authentication without relying on biometrics. And we solved that using VAuth, for which the average accuracy was 97%, the average false positive rate was 0.1%, and the matching delay was less than one second. And thank you.